I just want to add a few thoughts to the previous video, and that is number 200 on my YouTube channel. The previous video was about mental health, emotional sickness, and or addictions. It's about the voice within, and the true voice of Jesus Christ, the shepherd, the Lord is our shepherd, I'm talking to us as born-again, spirit-filled Christians, disciples of Christ. The Lord is our shepherd, and we hear his voice. Because Jesus said very clearly, if you read the four Gospels, my sheep hear my voice. And so the big controversy in certain uh, people's minds around the world is about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And unless you're baptized with the Holy Spirit... How can you operate with spiritual gifts? Eagerly desire Holy Spirit gifts, especially the gift of prophecy, but also desire the other gifts that go together with prophecy as God apportions the gifts. And it's, it's up to the grace of God to apportion the gifts to whosoever he chooses to have whichever gift. But Paul was writing about eagerly desire all the Holy Spirit gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. And when you read in the letter Paul wrote concerning the gifts of the Spirit, he listed distinguishing spirits, discernment, distinguishing spirits, and words of knowledge and wisdom as well as prophecy and, and, and faith as a spiritual gift and healing and miraculous power as a spiritual gift. And these Holy Spirit gifts work together individually for us within, each one of us within, but also in our twos and threes. So when you're trying to work out which voice are you hearing? Is it the true voice of the true Jesus Christ? Or is it one of the false Christs that Jesus himself talked about there would be in the last days? As you read the four Gospels, you'll see that Jesus spoke about the last days. There'll be many coming claiming to be him. So human beings claiming to be Jesus Christ himself. Now, I've not met many people who claim to be Jesus. I've met a couple of, one or two, and I've obviously refuted it to their face. No, you're not. I know Jesus, and you're not him. And they're not joking. They're not joking. So I, I've met the, the Antichrist spirit, and I've met the lying spirit that claims to be Jesus in human form today. That's why we need the Holy Spirit baptism, including receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, including prophecy, yes, but also discernment, distinguishing spirits, to work out which spirit you are hearing indirectly through a third person or within yourself, your own mind. Each one of us can have a thought come to us that is not from God, not from ourselves, but from the enemy. For instance, Peter. The disciple Peter, when Jesus said, it's now his time to go to Jerusalem and die, Peter blurted out, you shan't go. And Jesus rebuked Satan, because that message came out of Peter's mouth that thought that came to him, which he blurted out without thinking, without taking that thought captive, he blurted out, you shall not go. And Jesus rebuked Satan, who spoke through Peter. This is before the cross, before the, the blood was shed and before the resurrection. And Peter, who heard God, the Father, reveal to him, Peter, when Jesus said, who do you say I am, Peter? Peter said, you are the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, My Father has revealed that to you, Peter. Now is my time to go to Jerusalem and die. And Peter then said, You shall not go. A prophecy. You shall not go. Peter didn't want Jesus, his friend, to die. And Jesus knew the will of his Father was for him to go to Jerusalem that Passover and that this was now the time for him to die. It was the third Passover within Jesus' ministry. Three years, three Passovers. So any disciple can be used of God in the Spirit of God to bring a revelation, a truth spoken about God himself or through words of knowledge about somebody you know in your life as you are used of God to reach out to them with the truth in love. So, <clears throat> so with mental health, mental health, or more correctly put, mental illness, people's minds become de uh, deranged, confused, they're hearing voices, uh, they're doing bizarre things, they're acting out, something's going on that's not normal, not rational, not reasonable, and the world calls that mental illness. They've lost control. A thought comes to them and they act on that thought and the deed is done. And of course, in this day and age, the 16th of September, 2022, there are lots of people with mental health issues, including out and out illness, and they do acts of violence to endanger others or themselves. So, the, the voice that comes to somebody's mind, a thought comes to them, for instance, to kill themselves, to commit suicide, that is not God. God is not telling anybody to kill themselves. We know the devil came to Jesus in the desert and, and effectively told him to throw himself down from the cliff and quoted a scripture, God will protect you. Your father will protect you he'll send angels to stop you dashing yourself onto the rocks below and jesus knew not to give in to the temptation of the devil's voice three times the devil came to him quoting scripture to try to manipulate jesus christ to kill himself to bow down to the devil to allow the devil to lead Jesus in his life on earth. And Jesus knew he didn't come to do the will, the will of Satan, Lucifer. He came to do the will of his father. And so here it is, the battleground is the mind. Ephesians 6, verse 10 forward. Put on all the armor of God. The armor that Jesus himself had. He was protected his mind was protected. All the armor of God. We need the armor of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We need the equipment of God. God has equipped us in every way to protect ourselves from the evil one. And protecting self also means protecting those around you who are equally yoked with you in Christ in your twos and threes. <clears throat> taking captive every thought, whatever thought comes to you. We know Jesus Christ obeyed the law. He didn't break the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> he never sinned. He only wanted to do the will of his Father. And that is our calling in Christ to conform to the pattern of Christ and to leave this pattern of this world behind. 
And part of the pattern of this world is the love of money. So anything to do with loving money cannot be from God. But then you have to question the role of money in the Christian church, so-called. Tithing, we know, was a misuse of Scripture for many years, decades, because somebody saw it as an income stream to use that Scripture to bring money to the priests of the modern-day church. Well, you can look into tithing yourself <clears throat> and you can see that certain ministers, so-called, <clears throat> have lied. They've used Scripture and they've lied. And they've accused congregations of robbing God if they don't bring the tithe into the church, the storehouse. And they've manipulated the minds of, let's call them gullible Christians, could be young Christians, mere churchgoers, not even born of God. They don't have the Holy Spirit in terms of discernment. And they're, they're caught up with this preaching to their guilt that if you don't tithe you're robbing god and by tithe they mean money not produce so that is a clear manipulation of the minds of impressionable people who want to do good and they are manipulated with that old testament scripture concerning tithing we know the devil uses scripture to control people, manipulate them, dominate them, intimidate them, to control them. And that is the spirit of the cult. I've talked about cults elsewhere. So someone who's trying to control your thinking is generally, it's not from God. That person is not from God. They're trying to control you according to their pattern of their thinking. Each one has been given the Holy Spirit. Well, that's if you're born again. If you're a churchgoer and you've yet to let Jesus Christ into your life 100%, not talking about one, one day a week for two hours, committing your life to Christ, asking him to be Lord, is 24-7, 365. Now, if that sounds too far-fetched, then already it's doubtful whether you are of Christ yourself already. You may be a churchgoer, you may be a minister, you may be qualified with degrees about theology, doctors of divinity, but unless you have bowed the knee to Jesus Christ once and for all time, that means 100% of your future is now laid at the feet of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm coming to the point, I'm just talking to the remnant few, the few disciples who have yet to leave Christ. And I say yet, but you don't want to leave Christ, no more than I do. Where else can we go? Christ has the words of eternal life. Jesus says, if you, if you remain in him, <clears throat> he'll remain in you. This means you still have free will. You still can choose Christ today, now, to follow him for the rest of your life. Or you can choose not to. But what you cannot choose is to have two masters. You cannot choose Christ 50% of the time and then choose to be in the world 50% of the time. Or even worse than that, which that is bad enough, but even worse, you say to yourself, well, I'll, I'll go to church once a week for two hours and I'll conform to whatever the religion is and that will sort me out for another week. And that's not 50% of the time. It's not even 10% of the time. If you work out how many hours in the week for a full week of seven days, 724s, and you give two hours, that is a, a minuscule amount of time that you are sacrificing for Jesus Christ. And it's not even a sacrifice because it's just lip service. 
Now, I hadn't, if, I hadn't intended to finish on that point, but that is a valid point. If you understand that when you give your life to somebody, it's 100%. When someone has saved you from death, from hell, from, from uh, the lake of fire, and you believe that and you give your life to Christ, the rest of your life is served in gratitude to Christ to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we are eternally grateful to God who sent his only begotten Son to die for me in my place. The only one who could rescue me from Satan was Jesus Christ. And I mean from Freemasonry. I mean from the false master, from the false brothers. And this is how I know that there is a pharisaical legalistic movement, which is not only the occult, it's a cult, but it's the occult as well. It's in two forms of religion, a cult religion, but it's an occult religion. And beneath every cult, you can be sure it's not Christ. We can see it clearly with the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're known to be a Christian cult. They think they're Christian, but obviously they don't know the Christ that we know. They're not born again. They are a cult, a religious cult. And you cannot go to preach the gospel, the true gospel, in any kingdom hall. They won't allow you in. Because what you'll be doing is undermining their doctrines, and they won't allow you in. They won't book you. They will not book a real Holy Spirit-filled prophetic evangelist into speaker any uh, witness, Jehovah's Witnesses halls, which they call kingdom halls, but they're not the kingdom of God. They're not the Father's house, not the Father of Jesus, but they do belong to the other Father, the father of the sons of the devil, the devil himself. And that's not being unkind to them because they're lovely people. I've talked to many Jehovah's Witnesses over 30 years and they are truly lovely, moral people, but they believe they're saved not to go to heaven, but to inhabit the new earth. I've tried to tell them, but their minds are made up so all I can do is, if I see them and they're open at all, uh, the lights has just gone out now in the car, so I think we'll close it here. 16th of September, 2022, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Pray for us as we pray for you, and let's preach the true gospel of the true Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we will see... God do mighty things in setting people free. God bless you. Talk again soon. God willing. God bless.